Hey, good morning everyone. This is Michael from CY Star. Let's go and tackle this again. We're going to have to go ahead and get our cylinder head cleaned up. We're using the Tata one, but we want to go ahead and clean it up. Let's check it out. I left it actually from since yesterday. I didn't get really get a chance to work on it after uh, we got settled on our handlebar grip. Um, I'm pretty confident in this one right here. It probably won't jiggle that much anymore. But this one's for sure is pretty stabilized. It doesn't even go in the teeth, but it still locks in pretty well. A little unfortunate. You know, they're not always perfect. You see a little bit of gapping here and there. I order a different kind of uh, RAM mount also to be able to put a cup holder here and AKA slash a GoPro mount. We'll see. But I also have a GoPro mount coming up for the helmet as well. I decided to go with the GoPro um, Session 5 because it's the most smallest one they have and the latest one they have uh, compared to uh, just, I believe it's called GoPro uh, Before Session 4. And then they had GoPro Session, which is a relabel of GoPro 4, I heard, uh, Session. So now they just call it GoPro Session instead of saying GoPro Session 4. They just dropped the name 4. But GoPro 5 Pression came out in 2017, which is still their latest one in addition to the GoPro uh, 5 Black. Which is not the latest one, but it has image stabilizer, which I thought was really cool. Yep, that's what we're here for. We're going to go ahead and you can see here I cover it up. And we're going to bring it. I, I kind of lay it this way so more of the head is actually exposed to the, to the gasoline. But let's just go and bring it in and clean it up and see what we can do with this bad boy. So here we go. Ugh. Get that dog in here. Get in. Get in here. Go. There you go. See, like it's just creeping in. Go. Go, 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 go. Yeah, he's got attitude. He doesn't feel like he wants to walk any faster. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a good dog, though. He keeps the whole place well guarded. But anyway, yeah, so I decided to go ahead and go with the Pro, GoPro Session 5 because it's, even though it's not the highest resolution get, the newest one came out, I think it's called now uh, GoPro um, Hero Black or something like that. So I'd rather just go with the GoPro, uh, it's called a Hero still, but they call it Session. Sessions are like the smallest GoPro you can have. So that's going to be replacing my Note 5 as a cameraman here. So I'm looking forward to it. I also got several uh, different kinds of, well actually the tripod mount, I already had a GoPro mount. I never really used a GoPro before, so I'm excited to actually get my first experience with GoPro. And I think the 5 will probably be the best introduction for me. It's small, I can mount in my helmet, as well hopefully do some video blogging as well. So here we go, this is what... Let's check it out. I try to aim the camera this way now. That way you get the lighting as well. I'm going to take this out of the bag. It's been left out there for 48 hours, right? So let's see how much of cleanness it actually did for us. Uh, before I do that, I still have my cut wounds here. Uh, it's still healing from a day. I decided to take a little break uh, from my back here. Uh, so far the injections did me really well. I think the inflammation has gone away about 75%, so 25% is still lingering around. But I don't want to push my limits yet. Just like uh, your scooter break-in period. So, let's go ahead and get started on that. Get some gloves on here. Different color ones, but they're protected. Uh, this one's still breathable on this side, so this one's the one that's kind of protected a little bit harder. Same thing with this one here. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, I'll be able to set that little GoPro Session 5 or Hero. Just remember the word Session. This is the smallest version they have of GoPro. It weighs, I think, I don't know, 7.21 gram. And then the regular GoPro usually weighs about anywhere from, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> about maybe 12, 12 grams. So a little bit more. But let's check it out. See how clean this guy got in, on his own. Well, not on his own. We did a lot of scrubbing. But it's not too bad. Let me see if I can get another piece of cardboard here. That way we can start, or <clears throat> I could probably just use the bag. Um, I like to have something a little bit more absorbent, so let me see if I can just get a little piece of cardboard. That way I don't stain our main cardboard. How about that? Okay, here we go. Just one out here. All right, so that way you guys can see a little bit better. Okay. Okay, let's check it out. There we go. This is the, so far the final result here of this guy. Not too bad. You can't really tell too much of the blown gasket part too much. It blown right right here on the side. And then the exhaust was the most dirtiest one. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit more scrubbing on this one. I feel like we can get a little bit more cleaner. And then we're gonna hit it with something different. Uh, WD-40 would probably take off carbonation as well. This is a fast blast. Or we can get, ease it up and off. Let's try 
let's try both. Let's see which one actually gives us a better uh, bang for cleaning. So these two products here, conventional oven cleaner, which normally people actually turn on their oven and get that heat to help them. But since this is not on the engine, it's not heated either. We're gonna do the best we can with what we have. <clears throat> there we go. So, still got my sponge here. It's partially clean. <laughs> it's kind of dry though, but it's okay. We'll get the moisture from a little bit of gasoline and help shake a little bit of the loose. And we'll use our gasoline as a dip again to get all the solvent out. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just give this a, a light brush. We'll probably spray it with a little WD-40. This one doesn't really have to be touched much, nor is the intake manifold. It's pretty clean. See, there's not much to it. Uh, also, the GoPro session there is actually a 10 megapixel camera. The GoPro 4 session, I mean the GoPro 5 session is a 10 megapixel uh, camera, which is that little cube uh, camera. It's pretty much just a whole camera lens that takes up all the front space of it, so there's really not much LED that you can see, only a little push button on the on the very top. Well, it's simple to use, you know, you push for record, push off. The GoPro 5 has voice activated, uh, 5 session, and uh, GoPro 5. And then also has image stabilizer, which that's why I found the most useful. That's why I select that, even though it was like a, almost a good, gosh, got a good deal on it. Uh, almost about $75 more than the, the GoPro Session 4. <clears throat> but I'm hoping that the image stabilizer, even though it doesn't actually, the battery is slightly a little bit lesser than the GoPro Session 4. Because again, it doesn't have to have image stabilizer, which that draws a little bit more battery power. Um, but it still can be... Uh, Pretty useful I think in situations especially when we're in you know motorbikes and stuff like that we need to build each and every crest of the roads so I think that vibration or stabilizer function is going to become really nice in hand uh, but people still do really well with the session 4 as a you know a dash cam or something like that or sold so that's mainly what I'm probably going to use it for other than we're just recording to see the performance of the ride you can come along with me I'll try to attach it where my chin is on my helmet because I hear that's the best spot for it not the handlebar because then you get all the vibration and your neck first as a you know you know those little gimbal where it kind of balances out when it shakes and stuff like that so that might be too pro okay let's just hit this a little bit with wd-40 first and see how much it could do for us okay i got the big huge one right here where it just takes the whole space like that i'm not sure why i did that but not too shabby you might want to face it down because this will squirt right back up to your face careful you're gonna do this you know wear some protective gear if you want to here we go. <clears throat> I can't make it. It's not something by law right now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spray down. That way it goes in. It goes in the gasoline a little bit. Okay, let me go ahead and get this big. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Just look away from any hole area or something like that. Close your eyes if you need to. If you're gonna do this without safety goggles, at least one, two, three. All right. not bad look it fits right into that little groove right there okay so let me go and get this hit it a little some more okay guess wd4 spreads the load i guess maybe let's see how much it really comes out oh yeah it does come out like not bad never knew there was a reason for the big mouth but i can see why the cans looks a little bit twice as large. You can see here, it's almost the size of my whole arm here. Pretty have long arms. <clears throat> okay, so we'll leave this aside for a second. Let's just do a thing, and hopefully it covers and coats. And then we'll we'll try to attempt to scrub it off. And then if that still doesn't work, we'll get our oven cleaner right afterwards. Okay, because I don't want to put too much in there to see what's going on with it first. So let's go and leave this aside, and we're going to probably start building our head now. Let me go ahead and put this out here. We'll cover this gasoline so the fumes doesn't really... Actually, after 48 hours, it's out in the open. It doesn't really smell too bad comparably before. So we'll just leave this here for now. Our other chemical over here. We got Russell oleum too, but that's removing rust. Not has to do with anything with carbon buildup. Okay, we're going to come back for this guy afterwards. In the meantime, we're going to be starting a symbol shortly here. Our new Tata 232 head. I'm facing the the board this way. That way you guys can see more of it with the sunlight going the opposite direction. Or for me. 
<coughs> a little bit more clear shot than if it was facing the other way. Just remember the shot with our handlebars there, kind of learn. Now this does pick up a little bit more lighter contrast, which here do I get a resolution on that. So what we're gonna do now is uh, start preparing this to get our cylinder head assembled, put the dowel pins in there. We'll probably use some new dowel pins as well. So here's our cylinder head, it's really nice and clean. We're gonna clock our pistons. And I was told that actually you don't need to do a spray on, on the intake manifold gasket, nor the cam chain tensioner gasket, nor the base gasket. So this whole thing is left dry. The only thing you're really gonna spray on is normally your cylinder head gasket, which uh, we did do that and, and some, but we're just gonna spray the base cylinder gasket once we actually uh, do a real uh, you know, loop fit and everything. But right now we're gonna do a dry fit installation. Just wanna make sure we can turn this freely again without any trouble. So, <clears throat> let me go and protrude that out here. Nice. Okay, we're gonna get the top dead center. Eventually, when we go ahead and you know, get our stroker out as much as possible, and then we're gonna probe it in there. So let's go ahead and get started on that. I'm excited, as well as you probably are, to get this guy assembled. These are our leftover parts for our member Kickstarter gear mechanism, our manual Kickstarter gear. And then also our camshaft here that we're not using in order of the rocker arm. And order of the valves, we're going to put those on all back into its appropriate, um, well, that one's actually from some, some older one. That was from actually the 150cc uh, rocker arms here. But these are the ones that came from the um, SSPG uh, cylinder head that we need to actually uh, put back in there. So those valves actually came from the old uh, 150cc that I had. So these are some of the scrape bolt parts and stuff like that. But they're pretty useful. We don't need our drain bolt anymore. Uh, old cam chain there and then this is right here is a i believe it might be a smaller intake manifold plastic originally for the 150 cc so you can see what the comparison chart looks like we'll take the new one out here from the tata one and since the tata one they make theirs a little bit bigger i believe it might be standard i'm not sure let's check it out and then we can, we can go from there okay there's the tata rocker arm the new uh, ssbg cylinder base gasket uh, we're going to be installing as well as the metal one. This is the new one. So we're going to only spray the cylinder head gasket one and we're going to leave the base gasket dry. And usually Tata comes with two, a thin one and thick one. You want more compression, use a thin one. But since we're not having to uh, use it from the Tata one, we're just actually going to use, because we're not using a Tata cylinder head, um, I mean cylinder, we're just going to take it from our SSPG assembly, which they only have one size pretty much for the base gasket. So I think it's like a medium or middle. Uh, <clears throat> Here we go, this is our Tata one we're gonna put in there. And here it is. Now let's check out the plastic one. We'll see how much far off they are. And similar, this is from a Tata 232 cylinder head, okay? Also fits a 182, we noticed that. All right, so let me take this one guy out. Now this is for an intake manifold. I'm deciding to put one on there in between to hopefully, you know, cause if you put copper spray on uh, this, plus, you know, you put directly on intake manifold here, it's made from aluminum, so that means the aluminum cylinder head, you know, cast aluminum cylinder head is going to transfer heat easily to our intake manifold. And what I'm going to try to do is try to get a little bit more cooler preference. I mean, cooler, I mean, like a temperature wise. Okay, so let's look at this. This is the original one that came in, and this is the new Tata one, the 232 one. You can look at it. I'm not sure you can see it now. It's a little bit bigger, right? So the reason why is it doesn't have to restrict any more of the intake manifold. That was the original one here for a 150. And then you have the 180 slash 232 cylinder head here. Look how much bigger that is. I'm not sure you can see it in the resolution. Let's see if I can get a resolution. There we go. See that? Almost like another, probably I would say a good, yeah, probably a millimeter at least. Swallowing it in. Okay, so the reason why is because it fits just right. Your intake manifold, see how big that is. So if you're using the stock intake manifold, don't do it. Use the one that comes with your Tata cylinder head or or the one that actually, if you have an upgrade, see how that is? It, it uses the whole bore of the intake manifold perfectly. So if you were to put the smaller one, you would, you would actually create some restriction Meaning it'll funnel it in, you know, but you still have a blockage. See there? There's still a millimeter that needs to open. So we're going to use the Tata one in replacement of that one. Now, also, you want to check this to alignment-wise. This thing right here, 
you can see here. See, it's perfectly open to the big size right here. This is the Naruku. You can see it flushes Naruku one. Now, if you were to actually use the old one on the Naruku one, you can see here it's actually cheating you because the wind, when it comes in, there's going to be a restriction here and it's going to create back, back wind and you don't want that back wind force. So you want to make sure if you have something like you need to tape it down to a 139 QMB, you want to get the Naruku spacer because what that does is it takes it from a 24, I believe this is 24, and tapes it down to a 21 millimeter. I think this is 21 millimeter right here. It tapes it smoothly down though, it's like a tapered edge. It's not like this where it just blocks it. It curves the wind in, like funnels it in properly and channels it. So this is what we're gonna go and deal with. We're gonna deal with a, <clears throat> the intake manifold of 232, that way it flushes, you can see here, it just sits perfectly all around. There's no extra plastic that's, that's blocking the wind from actually funneling in your into your bore, your your cylinder head. So this is great. So we're gonna use this one. It doesn't come up too much. So again, the only purpose of me putting a plastic one and not having this straight in there like I did before, I wanna see if I can compensate and not have this get heat up the same temperature as when the cylinder head gets hot. And with the copper spray, just the only thing that's making contact with this, uh, the other uh, aluminum cast, it's transferring the heat very easily. Copper transfer heats very easily for you. It's great for connectivity. Uh, making sure there's good contacts, but it's horrible for heat uh, heat transfer that you don't need sometimes So we're gonna try to keep our intake manifold cold by putting a little plastic spacer in between it and um, We're not gonna spray with any copper spray or anything. We're just gonna still put the paper paper gasket and they do have the paper gasket in here And also have the timing cover uh, thing too. We have also an, and remember again our um, <clears throat> What was it? Our intake manifold gasket was the same as our uh, uh, cam chain tensioner gasket. So we can use uh, this one's for the exhaust gasket. We'll probably use this one as a brand new one uh, instead of the NCY one. We'll see what the Tata one can actually perform. Uh, maybe it'll create a better seal. And we're going to keep this also dry as well. We're not going to put any gasket spray. Even though those recommended gasket spray, the gel that I bought, did recommend putting someone for the a gasket. Again, we're dealing with GY6, so we're going to try out um david uh tata expert informed me on this so i'm going to take his word for it and we're going to experiment ourselves and see how well it does without the um the spray on gasket so we're keeping the base gasket i mean sorry we're keeping the intake manifold gasket dry meaning there's no spray copper spray or anything on it we're keeping our exhaust gasket dry meaning there's no copper spray which i didn't have originally for the ncy one either and we're keeping our yeah, our base gasket dry as well. The only thing we're going to really spray is the metal cylinder head gasket, uh, which you can see right here is, is the metal one between uh, both of the cylinder and cylinder head. So this is the only thing we're going to really spray, which is great for us because remember how, well, you can see I'm in the process of still scrubbing it. So that's how much <laughs> this is taking time to actually scrub. So I'm actually kind of relieved that I don't have to actually spray on there. So we'll find out how well that does. He also recommends I do... Uh, put a cam chain tensioner because the reason why is you can't really foresee what's inside because when the engine actually spins creates a lot of heat uh, things expand and heat and gets really loose even though you think it's tightened initially so we're going to go ahead and stick with um, the cam chain tensioner fully functional uh, with the shaft and everything we're not going to put our hollow one maybe at the end time or let's call it end games we'll try this out as a last resort captain america would <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry, referencing the movie. I can't wait till that Marvel movie comes out. I'm super excited about that. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing first, uh, we can go ahead and prep up our gasket to be sprayed on. That way, it gives us some time uh, to actually, once we do the dry fit installation, everything checks out well. We're going to go ahead and continue on and um, uh, pretty much start assembling everything. It's going to take us a while anyway, so it's going to be a little bit of time. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a piece of this cardboard. Uh, and then prepare it for uh, spray. I'm just going to spray it out there. Let me see if I can rip a little piece. All right, there we go. We got a little piece here. All right, again. Okay, so we're going to take this out. We're going to spray this. It comes out anyway, SSPG one. So I'm super excited. Uh, now this stays, again, it stays pretty much, it's not even gonna dry on you. It's gonna stay wet for six months. So don't expect it to without engine heat helping you. It's not gonna dry on its own. So let's take the metal part out. This is the one that we're gonna, the only one that we're gonna actually, let's just take them both out. Cause we need to do a dry fit anyway. So we're gonna keep this on here, keep it in here for now. 
Okay, let's go ahead. It's going to get really sticky, so that's why I put on a piece of cardboard. And then we can just do a little peeling off when we're done. I usually get with a little tie strap in between just to help pull it off from different angles. So let me see if I can get a tie strap. We can use that to kind of probe it out of there. It's metal, so it won't be too bad. Let's see here. Where's all my plastic tie straps? Tools ready. I start bringing our toolbox soon. Let's do that. Let's bring our toolbox. All right. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna go and start assembling. Let's sit in the way where we can actually see everything. So let me still get a tie strap here because we want to be able to. There we go. Twist and hold, and we'll be able to cut it off once we're done with it. Okay. So we use tie strap for everything, including our cam chain. Which we're going to do that as well. There we go. That leaves it kind of like tilted up a little bit. You can see here it's not perfectly laying on the cardboard when it gets sticky. It's going to create a little bit more problem for us. And we're going to go and give it a spray down. There we go. Need some of this copper spray. Just kind of trace the lining of it. You don't have to, you don't want to waste your copper spray. Go outside the line. Let it sit. Turn it for a second. Again, we're using a, a new base cylinder head gasket. And we're using a new uh, uh, cylinder head gasket here. But this one's not going to be for the one we're testing our dry fit because the minute we put it in there, it's gonna stick and pull off, and we don't want that. Get some time for the copper spray to build on it. Paper smash is a little bit more easier than the metal one. I'm not sure you can see it here. Kind of dark. I can get from opposite from the sunlight. That way you guys can really see. See that little spatical still? You almost want to turn it into a copper color, if possible. A little wet there. You can use your tie strap to teeter it up a little bit so it won't. Okay, so we're going to leave this for right now. Uh, so this is going to be sitting here for a good maybe 30 minutes or 20 minutes, depending how far along we're here we're going to take. And let's go ahead and see how our WD-40 is reacting. Not too bad. Let's give it a little lightly more scrub. And we'll continue on. So we did get some on here. So we're going to try to see... If we're going to go ahead and get everything out of the way here that we're making sure it's not going to get done before we start. Just want to see if I can give this guy a little bit more scrub down before we set him off for the rest. There's the one that I couldn't get too much. That's probably give it a good more scrub there.
That BB-40 did pretty good. Kind of broke it. See this part right here is one that's really dirty right there in the Christmas area. <clears throat> Look like it's coming. Again, we're doing this without any kind of sandblaster tool, so it's mainly depending on elbow grease and chemical. It's getting there though. A little darker area here. Just wedging my my dry. <laughs> See if I can wedge a little bit more of the surface. Hard to get through that camera sense. Okay, so it's not too bad, but not too good either yet. I mean, this is definitely usable. You can install this and get going, but we want to try to really make it look like new or better than new. That's our goal anyway. All right, so let's take this for another uh, gasoline dip, and then we're just gonna hit them with some oven cleaner and leave them out there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's clean this guy out here. This guy away, put him on our table, he's good to go. That way the floor on top of You can see here it vaporize a little bit. I can't see that. it out not meaning to that's okay kind of rotate them the gas leak run through them yeah these gloves are great a little thicker than the See here, so far is what we gotten. Still doesn't look fairly new, um, but it's definitely usable. So what we're gonna do is let this dry for a second, and before we set it for the the day, we're gonna try it out with some oven cleaner and see how more it can get out compared to just the WD-40 and the scrubbing and alcohol. I mean the gasoline. So we're aiming for getting that intake manifold, I mean the exhaust side of the valve cover, a little bit more cleaner, uh, less all the grime and stuff, darkness in there. So we're going to do our best. You can see here, still got some dark areas there, a little Chris area here. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to let the gasoline fumes out for a second and then we're going to spray it with some oven cleaner and we're going to leave it setting there again. And that's probably going to be set in our pan. We'll put this gasoline away for the day. We need this at a later time. But right now, this will be fine. Okay, so. All right, let's go and get started back. We're going to go ahead and start getting our engine assembled for a dry fit test, which we've seen already. It looked like it did really well. Arteta 232, looking forward to seeing that guys set up on there and our piston, which we need to, looks really nice, the piston one. I mean, that looks like almost brand new out of the box. Let me go get a comfortable chair real quick. And we'll get started. Get our dowel pins, 
everything that we need. plugged in here that will have a full charge for you guys all right so here we go we got all our dial pins here we're gonna get ready to establish this let's see if i can get the angle front view let's see which one's the best way i can get it for you okay so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and get everything prepped here ready first of all we're gonna put some of our 10 millimeter dowel pins. They could be 10 by 10 or 10 by 14. Doesn't really matter. The little length is not gonna hurt it. Uh, dictate I couldn't use anywhere from even a 10 by 20, but that's fine. We're not, we don't need the extension because there's no spacer in between our base gasket and this one. So we're gonna put our new base gasket in there. First thing first here, and then we're gonna put our dowel pins. Let's still make sure we dry out all the chain oil and stuff like that because we don't wanna Touch our base gasket right now. We want to keep our base gasket base dry as possible. So we'll bring our Tata here. We'll get our base gasket in there. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of do a, a dry wipe from any kind of lint or debris. Some lint got in there a little bit, but that's okay. I'm sure there's any kind of hard scrape we could do to get this final pieces out one of the dowel pins still stuck in there which if he really wants to stay in there he can stay in there as long as he doesn't interfere all right clean this area here there's the right look Chris is right there you see that builds up some gunk in there so we're gonna try to hit that guy or clean him out of there so let's see here I could take a probably something a little smaller Shove it in there. Clean them out. Just get, you can get air blow. <sighs> Let me see if I can just blow them out, but nope. All right, so what we're gonna do is just use pretty much the end of our cam chain rail here. Put a little bit of cloth on the, the tip of it. And we're gonna try to scrape a little bit out of there. It's coming. There we go. <clears throat> Don't want to damage your cam chain rail. Don't uh, flex it too much. Just want to get it all out of there. There we go. Nice and clean. Almost. Just a little bit of the white speck area. Because once you put the cylinder head, it's going to cover it. It's going to be hard to reach. You can still get it, but it's just harder to reach. So while things are out now, you can visualize and clean all the dirt around it. Some of the 